Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell, the global leader in regenerative therapies. Today I'm discussing stem cell therapy for autism spectrum disorder in the UK. So first of all, before we get into it, um, stemcellautism.com, we have a free download. It's a guide to stem cell therapy for autism. I put this together because of the insane amount of questions that we get regarding the treatment. Um, so a lot of what I'm going to be going through here is detailed in that guide. But it's free, it's simple download. You just put your email in and it, it will send it to you at no charge. All right, what is ASD? Well, it includes several conditions that used to be diagnosed separately, such as autistic disorder, pervasive developmental disorder, and Asperger syndrome. Overall, it includes difficulty with communication and interaction with other people, restricted interests and repetitive behaviors, and symptoms that hurt the person's ability to function properly in school, work, and other areas of life. So how common is it? The latest data, it's a little bit difficult because it used to just be the three individual diagnoses. Now they're all being lumped together. So the latest data worldwide is about one in 54 children are diagnosed with ASD. If you look at the Autism Society of UK's website, they state that about 700,000 individuals in the UK are affected. Um, it is hard to compare historical rates um, because of the criteria change. There are four times more common um, ASD diagnoses in boys than girls, and it is reported in all racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic groups. Um, how is it diagnosed? It's not always easy. It's not like you take a blood test and say, you know, aha, uh, it doesn't work like that. There's a wide range of symptoms. So it often is a two-step process. There's a pediatrician assessment, and then it can be referred to a team of specialists. Um, in a lot of countries, that, that part doesn't happen, but there's usually problems in two categories. One is communication and social interaction, along with restricted and repetitive behavior, patterns of behavior. Possibly there can be some genetic testing. Traditional treatments, uh, there's no one treat, one standard treatment. There's not a cure for ASD. Uh, so it tends to focus on each child's specific needs, which usually includes behavioral management therapy along with speech therapy, but there's also cognitive behavioral therapy, other educational and school-based uh, treatments, medications, nutrition, OT and PT. Um, there are no specific approved medications for autism, but there's off-label usage for uh, various antidepressants, antipsychotics, stimulants such as Ritalin, anti-anxiety medications, and then anti-convulsants. Um, we hear this all the time. A lot of children with ASD also have uh, a seizure issue. All right, moving into stem cell therapy, uh, treatments to date have focused on the use of what's called multipotent stem cells, uh, and those would be MSCs, which are mesenchymal stem cells, and then HSCs, which are hematopoietic stem cells. Um, treatments to date have not focused on embryonic stem cells. I'll tell you why on the next slide. The mechanisms of action of the stem cells that are multipotent include dramatic reduction of inflammation, immunomodulation, new blood vessel formation, that's called angiogenesis, and then a lot of paracrine actions, which is cell-to-cell -cell signaling for reprogramming. Stem cell therapy for autism is not a cure, but as you'll see um, throughout this presentation, it can dramatically help. Recent evidence suggests that immune dysregulation and neuroinflammation play a key role in the cause of ASD. Uh, we don't know exactly the cause. Stem cells are able to strongly inhibit CD8 and CD4 lymphocytes and natural killer cell overactivation and proliferation by inhibiting a pro-inflammatory tumor necrosis factor alpha. Uh, so they are able to modulate the immune system and help a lot with those issues. So the, this is a paper in World Journal of Stem Cells, 2019, the rational use of mesenchymal stem cells in the treatment of ASD. So MSCs can be placed directly without genetic modification or pretreatment, um, and they don't cause 
growth or uncontrollable growth or tumor. So when we do the treatment with mesenchymal stem cells or hematopoietic stem cells, um, most of the magic, so to speak, happens at the lab. Any red blood cells are removed. Um, there's a lot of safety testing that goes into these, but they do not cause tumors, okay? Um, you don't have to do cross-matching or cross-typing. Several proof-of-concept clinical studies um, have shown the safety and effectiveness of MSC treatment in autistic patients. So embryonic stem cell therapy, along with induced pluripotent stem cell therapy, are just not ready for prime time. So you should not be looking at one of those. Um, embryonic stem cells can lead to tumor formation. They immediately get rejected, so you would need immune suppression drugs as if you had a kidney transplant or something like that for the rest of time. So it's, it's not a good option. Stem cell therapy with mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells are the way to go. So excellent results to date. This is um, actually almost 10 years ago, uh, was a collection um, of studies reviewed uh, that showed promising and impressive results. Um, it's not quite clear how the MSCs do what they do, but as you can see in these studies, um, for ASD, you can look at the primary outcome, um, improvements in cognitive and social tasks, improvements in stereotypic behaviors, improvements in cognitive ability, you know, so on and so forth down the list. There's only one there that showed uh, no improvements. When we see no improvements, it typically means that it's a low quality stem cell or they didn't give enough. All right, so this is a paper that my team wrote um, at R3, The Promise of Autologous and Allogeneic Cellular Therapies in the Clinical Trials of ASD. So what we did was we reviewed all the clinical trials that have been done. Um, and you know, there's not a ton of them, but autologous studies, which is when um, you use the child's own bone marrow or umbilical cord blood from their umbilical cord that had been stored. Um, there were two studies with bone marrow, three studies using umbilical cord blood. Um, and then in the allogeneic, which was from a donor um, umbilical cord, there was one study that used umbilical cord uh, stem cells. There was one study for umbilical cord blood and fetal stem cells. And there was one study for umbilical cord blood and umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells. So we're gonna go through those studies in the next uh, few slides. So in China, they conducted a phase one and two clinical trial to measure the safety, feasibility, and effectiveness of both umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells and the umbilical cord blood uh, cells in autistic children. It was open label, so there wasn't a secret as to what the patients were receiving. Um, there were 37 autistic subjects, and patients received both, cord blood and the umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells. They didn't have any adverse events except for a low-grade fever. That's actually very common. We do sometimes get some nausea, but usually it's the low-grade fever, um, maybe a little dizziness and chills, but you know it's very temporary side effects. The significant changes observed in these two uh, clinical trials included improved social and behavioral withdrawals, enhanced eye contact, less emotional and aggressive response, adaptability, and less hyperactivation and unstable speech patterns. At six months, the results were compared to the control group, and considerably higher improvements were seen in the intervention group with the stem cells. Study out of Panama from 2019, this was actually a very well done study with 20 participants receiving a total of 144 million umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells over four treatments. The study has been retracted as of this past year because the patients did pay for treatment, but that shouldn't have caused a retraction. I mean, even patients in these FDA um, clinical trials can pay for treatment. The FDA approves that, so I don't doesn't discount it in my mind. Uh, the adverse events included fatigue, headache, fever, uh, a little hyperactivity temporarily, anxiety, and some swelling at the injection sites. All these were temporary. Um, the periodic psych eval showed that the group of children who presented improvements also manifested increased awareness. 
noticeable improvements in social communication and motor ability. Um, yeah, so it was very, very good um, outcomes. Here's one um, out of Duke University in the United States. These were autologous cord blood infusions. So at Duke, they started out by doing their first study open label. So all patients actually got the treatment and it was all IV. They didn't give anything intrathecal. Uh, it was 25 kids. They used their own umbilical cord that had been saved anywhere from one uh, to five million stem cells, I mean, um, mononucleated cells per kilogram. That means umbilical cord blood, okay? So there's stem cells, there's also a lot of other types of cells. So it was IV infusion, they deemed it to be very safe. They described significant improvements in behavior observed in the first six months, and then it was sustained at the 12-month follow-up. So if you think about it, they're giving these stem cells IV. And the problem with autism spectrum disorder is predominantly in the brain. So you want to get the stem cells to the brain. And IV, only a very few of the cells can get to the brain because of the blood-brain barrier. So uh, remember that. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit. So when you look at our treatment program, uh, from the UK, we offer these treatments in Manila in the Philippines, Islamabad, Karachi, and in Pakistan and Mexico, we have two locations. The stem cell therapy, um, as it should be done, is not allowed in the UK. So that's where we offer it. And we treat a lot of patients at all these locations for ASD and about 50 other conditions. So the process starts with a free phone consultation with one of our experienced stem cell doctors. We have patient concierge representatives who will be assigned to you that will help with all the travel logistics, including travel from the airport to the clinic and back. Uh, we also help, um, if there's a certain amount of stem cells, we do give two free nights in a hotel. Um, <clears throat> the cells come from our FDA regulated labs in the United States. They have a pristine safety record. The FDA requires very rigorous quality assurance. Uh, the testing on the biologics are uh, first rate. Um, includes many different diseases, bacteria, virus, fungus, and only if all of it is negative are the cells released uh, for use. Our uh, viability of the stem cells averages about 90% or a little higher. These are very pure, potent stem cells that are below the fourth generation. Uh, we don't culture past the usually the third generation, uh, which means that the very pure and potent and that's what the International Society of Stem Cell Research uh, recommends. All right, I wanted to show you uh, one of our clinics. This is our Cancun, Mexico clinic. Um, we have private rooms uh, for the children and, and patients who need that. We can set up with whatever cartoons or shows. Um, and it's very relaxing with the recliners. Um, here is a view of the common area. Uh, with where we do a lot of IV therapies. A lot of patients get to know each other um, and it's very relaxing um, <clears throat> when they're getting their you know, IVs. Uh, behind that is our biologics preparation area. We have the centrifuges. Um, this is one of our uh, doctors drawing up some of the mesenchymal stem cells and exosomes. Uh, behind that we have a, a private procedure room it's kind of set up, it looks like a, a surgery room. We don't do surgeries in there, but it is fully equipped with the anesthesia machines. In this video, one of our anesthesiologists is uh, sedating a child who has ASD. Uh, the child is not being put to full sleep, knows no general anesthesia, uh, but he's just being consciously sedated. So he's very comfortable. Um, he's not under, you know, he doesn't have the intubation or any of that. The mother's in the room, and here he's doing the intrathecal application of stem cells, which takes about 10 minutes. Um, the children don't feel it, they don't remember it, um, and it's been very, very safe. We've done it hundreds and hundreds of times around the world, okay? Um, we like intrathecal because it gets a lot of stem cells to the brain in a very safe way format. And reversing the sedation just takes a few minutes. Um, and then he'll be, uh, he'll be tired, but ready to go to, to the hotel 
after the monitoring period. Here you see some of the mesenchymal stem cells as well as the exosomes. We give both. We feel like the combination works exceptionally well. Uh, we've been doing that for years. Our patient satisfaction for ASD is over 85%. So <clears throat> as I mentioned, we do include ground transportation, uh, two nights in a hotel if it's over 100 million stem cells. We do use a child's weight to make sure that we give enough cells. That's the biggest reason that uh, treatment fails, is if a child doesn't get enough stem cells. Um, over the years, we've done over 23,000 stem cell procedures in the last decade around the world. We are the most affordable when you look at the quality, the safety, and the effectiveness. Um, you have to be careful when you're looking at some of these clinics. You know, one of our biggest competitors in the Philippines uses stem cells from sheep. Um, I've, I've never heard of that. It, it's hard even finding any research on that. So, you know, you got to be careful with some of these clinics. The other thing to keep in mind is that most of the time, uh, children are going to need repeat therapies once a year or every two years. And so there's an affordability you know, question. A lot of clinics around the world in China, Panama, um, even Mexico, they're over double the cost of what we charge. The quality is no different. Um, the effects are no different. Our safety standards are the highest in the world. Uh, it's just a matter of what they think they can charge and get away with. We try to make it as low as possible because we know we want to make it affordable because there's going to be a repeat treatment involved at some point. All right, once again, stemcellautism.com. That's where the free download is for the guide to stem cell therapy for autism. And start the process today by calling us at PLUS1, the USA, 888-988-0515. And visit us online at r3stemcell.com slash UK. Thank you.